Well, hello to all my friends in uh, Moscow and uh, Russia, and uh, thanks a lot for uh, coming to this event uh, at the embassy to the, the launch of my uh, book, which in Norwegian is called uh, Hel V. And uh, I've tried to uh, to pronounce it in Russian, but uh, I'm afraid that my language is not perfectly suited for that. Anyway, thanks a lot to the uh, embassy and uh, to Mr. Namtvet for um, housing this event, and of course to my uh, publisher, which has done a remarkable job in with this edition. I'm very delighted with both the uh, with both the layout and say the whole the whole feel of of this book. Uh, it's been published in many languages, fifteen now. Um, in addition to Norwegian, but, but I must say that the the substance and 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 feeling of of this edition really really stands out. I, I'm really delighted with it, uh, and it's especially it's a uh, it's a treat for me to see this edition because you know it started out as a very small and humble project. Uh, where I, I almost thought that this book wouldn't sell nearly anything oh, and I was absolutely certain that it would have no market outside uh, outside Norway. Uh, it started out uh, with a phone call from a friend of mine at a publisher and he, he wanted like, a, a funny book with mostly with pictures uh, showing uh, the rural Norwegian countryside. And he wanted it to be a, a quite funny book, one that perhaps made uh, a bit joke of the strange Norwegians with their enormous wood piles, uh, which I'm w one of them, of course, as you can see. <laughs> uh, but uh, I let the I let the thought mature a bit and grow in me, and um, I I found that this subject was so much deeper than uh, we thought on the surface uh, and uh, the first time that I really discovered the depth of uh, of this uh, subject was when uh, I had a new neighbor an old man and he uh, he had a lung disease so he'd been inside the whole winter uh, but when spring came he he went out and he started chopping wood uh, and the first year I was I was really afraid of him because I thought oh he's gonna fall over <laughs> any minute now because he was so sick but he kept on chopping chopping wood and uh, the strange thing was that he he got so much better uh, and when spring came he was uh, almost 20 years on younger and uh, very standing there with this enormous wood pile very proud of it uh, but the discovery of that was that he didn't, it, it wasn't just the, the physical side of it that made him better. It was also the mental side. And I think there's a strong, that, that's part of the strong connection between firewood and humans, that this material is what makes us endure the hard times. This is the material that makes us uh, survive the winters and winter perhaps in many senses of that word. So what he essentially did, that old man, was to tell his body that we are going to make it one more year, we are going to survive. And that uh, story grew into the, uh, into the first part of the book, which is called um, The Old Man and the Firewood. Uh, myself, I wasn't, I have to admit, I wasn't the, the firewood expert that I uh, perhaps has grown into now. <laughs> uh, I was uh, a writer and I'd been uh, working for a publisher and I'd been a journalist, but I wasn't in any sense of the word this uh, firewood uh, man with, with the depth of knowledge of it. So the book is also a tale of my own awakening as a firewood nerd and uh, my journey from being an, a novice with limited knowledge to searching through the innermost depths of, of this field. Uh, because it, it would perhaps be, uh, and I think that's 
part of the explanation of why the book has become so popular too, because this is a subject which on the surface may look very, very simple, and perhaps you may express in 30, 40 pages uh, quite well on how to chop wood successfully and, and make proper firewood. But this book goes to the extreme length of, uh, you know, telling every detail about it. And also, what I've tried to uh, fill the pages with is the connection between mankind and firewood. Uh, I mentioned that it's uh, the way for us to survive and endure the hard times. Uh, and I believe it is profoundly so that there's a connection between mankind and firewood. Because if you look back, far back, it was mankind's oldest energy. And it's been with us for thousands of years. Coal, gas, electricity, nuclear power, that's just in the last few minutes <laughs> of human existence. Throughout all ages, firewood has been what we have relied on. Uh, and I think that has made a bond and a connection between uh, mankind and, and firewood. Uh, so the book goes in quite extreme length at talking about this, both this, uh, this connection between us and the, and the firewood. Uh, and, uh, and it's a practical guide. First and foremost, it's a practical guide on how to chop wood, how to stack it, how to dry it properly, how to en ensure and check that you uh, have uh, the best quality firewood. A little bit on maintaining the forest too. And lots of hints and tricks on the small tricks of this, uh, this work. The small tricks that makes uh, it much easier for you to collect large amounts of firewood easily and good quality firewood. Uh, and after the book was published, uh, I also continued the research of the book. Uh, and I received a great number of letters from all around the world. Uh, the, book, this is, the book is in total sold 500,000 copies now. And uh, as I went along, I've gathered all the small uh, tips and uh, knowledge which I've um, received from, from many readers. And I've uh, made it to a new manuscript, which, which this book is uh, translated from. So this book is based on the expanded edition. I'm hearing the sounds of birds coming back here. So perhaps it's, time, it's spring coming now. <laughs> Uh, well, back back to the uh, back to the subject, uh, and one of the things that uh, I've uh, that I've tried to describe the closest is how to burn firewood with as little pollution as possible, because there's a saying that uh, there can be no smoke without a fire. But what this book says is that it's also completely possible to have a fire without any smoke at all. And it all comes down to the way you burn firewood, the quality of it, and also the stoves that you, that you burn it in. But it's completely possible to burn firewood so cleanly that there is no smoke coming from the house. And the nice part of this is that the more or the cleaner you burn it, the hotter the house gets, simply because you burn all the pollution that is uh, embedded in inside the smoke and the gases. So these things go hand in hand and I, I think firewood in, in modern times is still a brilliant source of energy uh, that goes hand in hand with, uh, with many other so, uh, sources of, of, of heat, be it electricity or gas, because it's so substantial and it works whenever what the condition of the other infrastructure it is quite simply the simplest energy possible and you can share it with your neighbor. It doesn't get old, it doesn't leak and it will burn no matter nearly <laughs> how, how the quality is. So I, I think that this ancient energy will still be with us and, and, um, and, and still carry on that connection between mankind and, and nature. Um, for many years to come, and 
I'm certain also because I've seen the bond that this work uh, connects to, to people, the enjoyment of harvesting firewood and being out in nature and, and gathering it. That's still a very, very satisfying activity. And uh, I'm really glad to, uh, to meet uh, or to bring uh, this text out to uh, Russian readers. So um, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you.